Welcome everyone to episode 90, I can't believe it myself, 90 episodes of Just Joshing. I am your host, Joshua Pentelaresco. I write stuff, I podcast too, and tonight my guest is the one and only Robin Van Eck. Okay, I hope I said that right. I don't want her to beat me because she's tough, and you know, with my name being what it is, I, I, I should have this down but robin is a writer but i think she went i think the really cool thing about this is i'm not just talking about writing today i'm talking about teaching and the impact teachers have on any uh, avenue i've had a few guests on here that are teachers and i can only imagine the impact they have in their heart in the hearts of their students um when i was uh serious made the decision to become a writer i was really really fortunate um I met a man named Mr. Sharp. I'm going to call him Mr. Sharp. You don't need to know his. that is who he was. But, I mean, his full name, no matter we're going to really disclose. But um, Mr. Sharp was a huge influence on me for this reason. He, My dad couldn't really help me in terms of story construction. It's not, it wasn't his thing. Although um, he, he was supportive. It, it wasn't that. It, just, it was not his expertise. Mr. Sharp, when I was when I was in high school, would take my novel pieces, read them, critique them, and give me feedback. And very, very important to my development. I would not have pursued this uh, had I had the encouragement I had. I learned an awful lot about writing uh, during my high school years, and some of a lot of that came from him. And that's just me. Like teachers are huge for me. So. You know, and writing, it's interesting, is that it opens very many different doors. Like, I never thought I'd do a podcast. That was the door, the unexpected door that opened for me. But for Robin, she's a teacher, and she's a huge impact. She's a, a huge influence on the writers in this community through the Alexander Writing Society. And I think that's a really, really cool thing. We'll get right to the interview in just a minute. In the meantime, let's hear the advertisement about my YouTube channel. Looking for my archive episodes of Just Joshing? You can do so on my YouTube channel, Joshua Pentelaresco. J O S H U A P A N T A L L E R E S E O. There you will find past episodes with guests like Susie Vidori, Ron Bender, Ella Bamont, Colette Turner, Chadwick Ginther, and more. Be able to check out my YouTube channel. Any right now. That's good. So Can't you be any do you worse than me stepping in mud up to my frickin' middle of my shins so, this morning. So why why'd you step in the mud in the middle of your shins this morning? Because I was stupid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest. <laughs> that was dumb. Oh, oh it was terribly stupid. Oh, I parked outside. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought, oh, well, and I park on the street. Normally I park in the parking lot, but they've been telling us that we can't park in the parking lot. Tenants can't park in the parking lot. So I was like, okay, well, today I'm going to be good, and I'm going to park on the street. And then I decided to cut across mm -hmm. to the parking lot, not realizing that the mud was not hard. Like, it wasn't hard packed dirt. <laughs> so it was like a slosh. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was really, really gross. You should have seen the mess I made in the... That, 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 the floor or the downstairs bathroom here. That, that's that pretty. High five. <laughs> <laughs> I did. No, I did the right thing and I went and found the maintenance guy and I was like, yeah, I think we better clean this up. <laughs> maintenance guy probably just like just cursed at you a little bit. Oh, well, actually, he said he if I hadn't said anything, he would have blamed the construction guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I was like, well, I can't do that. Not, not, yeah, not this it time. was like it was gross. I was lucky I was wearing flip flops but, and I had heard? I had extra shoes, so yeah, I was like, I mean, the mud was so thick, like it like sucked. The flip flops off of my feet. Yeah. So. Do you run this regularly? Like, do you run? Are you? Is this where you work? Yes. Uh, yes. So I'm, what the, is, I'm the program director for this, the Alexander Writer Center. So, so what is the Alexander Writing Center for those of us that are completely clueless? <laughs> I knew this question would come up. Of course. <laughs> you might as well start with the familiar, and then as we get yeah. deeper into this, we'll, we'll figure you out. Well, we're a, we're a local, um, obviously local. Uh, uh, creative writing organization, so we offer workshops and classes for you know new writers, seasoned writers. Um, we give opportunities for seasoned writers to become teachers because we all know that writing doesn't make a hell of a lot of money. 
So, <laughs> um, so we like to give people the opportunity to expand their portfolio in another way and, you know, and give back to the writing community. Um, we do classes, events. Uh, we've been around for 35 years and we just moved to this location. We were in Inglewood and now we moved from a basement in Inglewood in the Alexander Center to this fourth it's, floor amazing space with huge windows. And it's sunny. I mean, it's really chill. Like, like, seriously, you guys should like paint this thing like some kind of, Actually, no, you should do it. You should get some like local artists just to come and just graffiti the whole. Uh, we've actually been looking yeah. into some different options. I mean, so far for this room, like we've just got that half wall that we put in that they decided to paint a different color. But but yeah, like for now, I mean, it's still a, it's still a process because we've only been in here since the end of January. So oh okay, so this, is, this, is, this is this is a brand so so this is brand new space. Yeah. Wow, cool. So it just just it's gotten more support over time, or, or the, the the center's gotten more support. Oh over my time? gosh, yeah. I mean, I've been with the organization for going on fifteen years, and. Uh, I mean, when I started, we maybe had a hundred members, mm. right? And you know, and they'd already been around for twenty-five, you know, twenty years or whatever, but twenty-five years. And um, yeah, and then over the years, like it's just boomed. Well, you know, we're now at about four hundred and fifty members. Yeah. There's a lot of writers in Calgary. I know there is a lot of writers, and it and it's fantastic because you know, writing is a great thing to do, and you know, whatever reason you're doing it for whether it's you know for yourself personally or to make the big bucks that we all dream to do one day zillions and zillions (laughs) of dollars are there we just have to find them well well well, okay so i have a theory about this and this is not this is my theory and this is just 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 um something i've observed because i'm 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 from ontario but i've also lived in the states and i've done a few things and i've seen the difference in platforms there to hear mm-hmm. i think i think honestly one of the biggest reasons why the money is tougher up here that like to actually acquire any real serious money for writing here is because i think as a general rule of thumb um not just in writing but in art like just when it comes to talent in general canadians take themselves for granted and i i, I believe that because i've seen like just my own opinion just traveling on what i've seen is that I've seen the most talented people I've ever met are from Canada. Like it's not even close. Like um, you see, my, like I said, I've had like. You mean more like they don't? They don't get the recognition they deserve until they go or somewhere. Or they don't take themselves seriously. Either. Oh, a, a bit of both. Right? A bit, a, a bit of both. Um, yeah. I think they don't get the recognition they deserve because I think the way it's been set up here, the platforms just aren't there like they should be. And so what happens is a lot of Canadians with talent go, say, to the States, they get their, they get their deals there, mm-hmm. and then they come back up here, and then suddenly everybody knows who they are and respects them. I don't feel that's the way it should be, but I mean, that's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of how I, I, I perceive it, because I would, I would dare say, like, okay, I mentioned Adam Dries, I could compare him to any young adult author in the States, and he holds up what, well, in some cases, he's ahead of the curve, I think, mm-hmm. in where young adult literature is going to go in mm-hmm. the next five, ten years. Um, I look at, okay, another person, like, I talked about, we mentioned Sarah. Sarah is an incredibly gifted horror writer. She, if she listens to the, if she's listening to this, she'll probably be like, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> but, uh, it, no, she, she really is. She has such a unique, like, the thing that makes it, her stuff really stand out, too, is she, if you know her, you actually get a chance to actually, when you read her stuff, you can see that she has, she comes off these really interesting observations that nobody else does. Oh, absolutely. No, she's a trip. Yeah, she never gives herself as much credit as, yeah. as she should. Um, She's a good all round writer. It doesn't matter whether it's horror or, or yeah. what she's writing. Like she is just she's a very, very talented writer and huge vocabulary of words and I hope she's listening to that because <laughs> You're very loquacious there. Right? You're very loquacious. Um, yeah. yeah. No no, we have some fantastic talent here and you know, and that's kind of what we we've been about is, you know, just improving that and you know like I mean it's great to want to write um, but if you want to sell like I think there there are definitely tools that we can give you to write even better yeah absolutely. Right? 
and uh, well, uh, put your best work out there because why wouldn't you want to put your the best possible version of your story yeah. out to the world? No, no you, you got to be the best you can be. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's the honest truth. Yeah, and don't sell yourself short. Don't think that just you know ripping off a novel and thinking you know it comes out perfect is you know the way it goes because usually there's some play, some way that you can make it even better mm. uh, oh, you know, or look at it with a different eye and well uh, there, there's a point though where you gotta look at a project and go okay i have to move on yeah. oh absolutely and i think if you've been like i have a, another close friend who has been um the same novel you know for probably going on five years now and she just you know she's so like worried that it's not right it's not right it's like you know your writing is magnificent you know the descriptions like people have gone through this and they're like this is a fantastic story you know you just have to let it go you know you have to let it go well but but. then it's hard for us to do that i think any artist really i mean it's hard to because that's putting the you're being vulnerable Mm-hmm. By putting yourself out there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But there's also another big fear too. When you finish something, do you have any more stories to tell? Oh, absolutely. Or when you know, or when people, when it gets accepted, when when people, you know, respond to your work in a positive way or a negative way. I mean, uh, either uh, way, it's going to get you some attention, whether it's positive or negative. It, but. As long as long as it's actually like it's not neutral, like like yeah. it, like like I, me, I, whatever. Yeah, well, yeah, or it's nice. Like I hate things. <laughs> it's nice. No, be honest. You know, and th- and I think that's also what you know the AWCS kind of supports is just you know bringing writers together so that we can bounce ideas off of each other. We can support each other because Lord knows half the time at home, you know, our families aren't as supportive of what we're doing as as other writers are going to be. You know, so surround yourself with those people that want to help you, you know, reach. Mm-hmm. Stars, right? Yeah, well, cliche, but well, <laughs> well, you guys. Well, the thing is, you, you have to be bold and you have to think big. I mean, mm-hmm. you you really you really do because the thing the thing of it is, um, like anything else in life, this is this is it. it everything's about risk, and I think one of the smartest things I've ever heard from television, television, and it's hard in my French here, playing it safe doesn't get you shit. And it, and that's honestly the, it's the truth. No. You have to you have to be willing to go out there and go. Okay, I'm not afraid to get my ass kicked. I don't want to get my ass kicked, <laughs> yeah. right? But I I mean I'm not. If it comes to it, I'll get like I'll fall. I'll get up. I'll brush myself off. I'll yeah. try again. And you got to be willing to like take the opportunities. Um, this stuff came about. Like I like I mentioned earlier, like this podcast came about by purely by accident. And actually, in my case, my, my career my career trajectory has literally been a series of accidents that have just kind of worked out in my favor. Yeah. Right. Um, That's always nice. It, well, it's just it's just it, well, it's it's like it's just one of those things where you knock on the door and opportunities do present themselves. The real trick, I think, a lot of, and the other, like just not just in writing but in life in general, sometimes a lot of people don't see the opportunities for what they are. And the, what happens is they don't take that step to go, okay, why not? And then the door closes because it's just, um, there's, there's, a, there's a biblical quote, many are called, but few are chosen. And the, and the reason that actually is very apt is almost everybody at some point will get an opportunity to do something or be something or become something more. Yep. But the truth is, um, right, the truth is sometimes you don't recognize it when it's there. And that does happen to all of us at oh, least absolutely. once, absolutely. right? But well, then, we're afraid. But that's the second Definitely thing too. Afraid. Yeah. Well, no, it's the second thing too because if you do take this road, you're you're the people you meet change. Um, in my case, I am become more associated with people in the arts at different degrees of success. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had the chance to work with one of my heroes. That was a good and bad experience. Um, the, the the good experience was I mean, he was my hero and it was really cool and I have and and I'll always remember um, him playing Grand Theft Auto um, and after I hooked up my PS2 to the projector and that was his way of venting steam and and uh, it's hilarious when he was going on the road and promoting his book he's like you know I have to not play this game like the week before I go on tour but then I start thinking about the- <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. and that's a hilarious it's a side of him very few people got to see and. 
very few people get to see, and it was really cool that way. So I had that like those opportunities, but I I saw them; they came my way. And the difference between me and maybe somebody else is is on that on that front is I saw them for what they were. I saw the chances. I saw the risks too. Some sometimes, but I went for it because I had nothing to lose, right? Right? And that's a, and that's and that's I think the, that's the that's the real. Like the thing, the thing is, the thing there has to be that switch that we can flip in ourselves, though, that makes us realize that you know it doesn't matter. Like we, yeah, yeah, you have to go. Are we going to be worse off because we tried this and failed, or well, you know, know, or are we going to be worse off if we don't try? Well, most of us don't. Most of us don't think in those terms. Most of us don't. Right now, I think that's the real issue. I think one of the big things that, um, again, this isn't just a writing, this is a life thing. I think, yeah, uh, uh, this is just a real life thing. I think when Life the, coach, yeah, podcast. It happens. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, if you ever read my blogs, I'm, I, I do try to be a very positive dude. I just went through three months of garnishment. Uh, someone tried to blackmail me. I had a bed bug incident. This is all in the last three wow. months. All right. And this is nothing compared to what I've been through before, but so it's just like, this is just part of the course for me and it was just like okay so I'm just going to write this out one book's into a publisher I, I submitted it to an anthology I submitted it to a magazine I have another book that's about ready to go to the batery mm-hmm. I, I just I, like but again I've been through it I've been through it's like I'm already in the bottom <laughs> <laughs> what else can go wrong right oh, yeah. But, but the thing is, it, that doesn't happen overnight people usually have to go through some kind of storm in their life to get to that point where it's like this okay you know what I'm not. I've had my ass kick. <laughs> Bring it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we we gotta talk about you a little bit more here. Oh. Yeah, no. Oh no. She just, shoot. Shoot. She, she tried to get away. Let's talk about all this other stuff. I know. I know. So you teach here. I'm assuming, or you run, you run this, and I'm assuming you teach here as well. I am a. Pro, I am the program director. I am a writer. I do also teach here. Yes. Okay. So, what? Okay. So, what do you want to go for first? The, 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 the wonderful challenges of keeping this all organized, because I, out there, I'm almost thinking that that means me shouldn't be coffee. That might be something a little stronger. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually tea. I'm trying to... Yeah, okay. Excellent. I'm in my zen moment right now. <laughs> yeah, yes, I... No, it's cool. <laughs> trying to be zen with my peppermint tea. Yeah, I, I can show you a trick of peppermint and coffee someday. But, um, <laughs> but, the, but the thing is... Um, <laughs> No, like I imagine run, keeping this, like running this, organizing this some days is challenging. Um, or, or is it really like just a really small operation or is it like a medium sized operation? Well, I mean, we have a lot of members. I mean, what I do, um, basically, like, I mean, I, I do all the administrative work, I do all the programming, so I'm like, you know, talking with instructors and getting instructors to teach for us and, you know, and updating the website and, and all that stuff and dreaming up new programs and, you know, so really, like, yeah, like I, you know, I put everything together pretty much, but we have uh, a tremendous team of volunteers who do a lot of stuff. Uh, we have a board of directors, um, so, you know, if things get tough then I just kind of go to them and say, hey, I need a little bit of help here, or, you know, and then just goes along, but... <laughs> yeah, no, but, uh, like I said, because I've, I've done stuff, like, personally, where I, like, I've, I've, I've organized and collaborated on projects, and mm-hmm. it's been, like, and I, I know sometimes just things just come out of the blue, and you're like, what the heck was that? Well, yeah, there, you know, there's definitely times of the year where my head is about to explode, and I can't see straight, and I'd rather sit in the corner with a bottle of whiskey and bang my head against the wall and you know. <laughs> um, well, I don't drink whiskey, but maybe like a good bottle of red wine or something. Nice. <laughs> or cheap red wine, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not picky. <laughs> Make the pain go away. <laughs> you know, and then, you know, I go into my whiny woe is me for a little while and then I yeah, come good. back and I'm like, all right, here we go. We got to get it done because it's not going to get done otherwise, right? And Fair enough. So, but yeah, I mean, just like life, sometimes you know things get overwhelming and you have to take a step back for a minute and just go, okay, mm-hmm. prioritize. <laughs> yeah. You know, but yeah, there's definitely times of the year where we're busier um, with the you know various programs going on. So it's a it's a balancing act. I'm I, 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 I imagine. After. And so, where do you find time to write at this point? Is it usually? 
<laughs> she rolled her eyes, ladies and gentlemen, like just big time eye roll. I didn't, I just kind of sighed. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I can, when I feel like it. Um, actually, today that's what I've been doing. Nice. Um, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm, like I'm here, like, so I'm here like Monday to Thursday, usually during the day, so that if people are coming in and, you know, and need to pay for classes or just want more information or whatever, you know, there's somebody here in the office, but, um, but, you know, when I have downtime, I can sit here and write more, you know, and that's kind of what I did today because a little bit of a slower week this week, so taking advantage of that and my daughter was on spring break so it's kind of like uh do i drag her to work with me or do i work from home or do a little both which i, I did started. do a little both and like i mean i worked pretty much all week i took yesterday off and then today i was like well i need to be here just you know in case people want to come in and write and we had a, another group who's meeting here this afternoon so so you're here and you're doing your thing so okay yeah. so what got you into writing Oh my lord. Probably my dad reading to me as a kid. Um, I've always been fascinated with stories and storytelling. Um, I remember my dad reading The Hobbit to me when I was like six, seven years old and there was just something so magical about it. Um, You know, and I've always been an avid reader and I, I get that from my family as well and always books around so um, you know reading pretty much anything and everything you know reading The Hobbit and reading Watership Down and all those like huge books for a kid at the time <laughs> um, just yeah just just a love of reading and I think of stories and thinking wow how amazing would that be to so, to, to write a story yeah you know so have you written your Tolkien epic yet no. Do you want to write a token? No. <laughs> <laughs> you do not. You know, so writing and stories and everything, that's always been a part of who I was. Um, did a lot of writing and, you know, in school when we had to. And I used to um, make little plays and perform them with my dolls. Like that's I was, I was awesome. an only child for you know, first eight years of my life before my brother was born, so I was always having to entertain myself. Um, you know, and having a... Eight, up to eight-year-old, he was awesome. <laughs> yeah, was eight, yeah, doing plays with my dolls and whatever, and putting them into interesting predicaments. Poor Barbie. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah, writing stories. And then I think in high school... Um, you know, I also went through that whole period of, you know, people saying, oh, why do you want to write? Writers don't amount to anything, you know? And, you know, it's like, if you want to be something, go be a doctor or a lawyer or mm-hmm. whatever, right? And of course, I took them seriously. It's like, well, these are grown ups telling me that it's a fantasy to want to be an artist, right? And, uh, but it was always in the back of my head. You know, I almost, I was going to go into law. I'm very glad I didn't. <laughs> Ended up going into business instead, and it sucked. So, ugh. yes, it does. <laughs> business diploma, it's like, ugh. you know. So I've been in management for um, a long, 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 long time. But I, I, I'm almost saying I'm sorry. <sighs> I almost should have gone to law school. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, 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 I just hope you weren't stuck so much in middle management. If that was your, if that was the case, I, 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 mm. would, I will give you a hug. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, you know, it wasn't too bad. I was, I was the assistant manager for, for a store for a very long time, and uh, but really, I mean, he was my boss, as wonderful as he was, you know. Like to travel a lot, so really it was kind of me. So you basically you, you, running, you, you, running the show. Basically, basically you paid. Oh, the lights went out. Yay! So motion sensor lights. If you don't like move around a little bit periodically, they decide that nobody's in here. <laughs> that, that that you know. Yeah. This you know. It, it's great for preserving energy, but. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, 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 you know, you know honestly, just, just off top before we get back into this, um, what you guys should do is you should have like the Alexander Society dance. Every time the lights go out, you just perform. <laughs> and then, then on Sunday, C-A-W-C-S. Oh. C-A-W-C-S. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, uh, members, she will make the practices. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. I, I, as you can tell, I'm a pretty out there dude. Too, so I just <laughs> oh, I, I have I, I have fun. But um. But but yeah, you know. And then I, you know, over the years, like I still would try and write. Um, I do like that. You know, one page and go, oh, this is this sucks. And then I like tear it up and throw it away and just never look at it again. But I I always wanted to write a novel. I didn't know what I wanted to write, but I loved reading um you know a lot of like dean coots and you know i like scary scary stories and you know mysteries and stuff like that so i thought oh that's you know that's what i want to write and then it was about well in 2003 i moved here so i moved here in 2000 and uh in 2003 you know i was well, I was in a crappy relationship and I was looking for any kind of reason to not be home. And uh, so I thought, oh, I should take a creative writing class. And so I searched, you know, I looked at Mount Royal and I looked at USC and, you know, for all their continuing aid courses. And it just, I just kept thinking about like the idea of like this classroom setting, like very sterile classroom type setting. And I thought, ugh, I don't know. Um, and, and then I found the Alexandra Writer Center and I thought, huh, you know, and they were, it was, you know, they marketed as, you know, those small classes and, you know, that kind of thing. And I thought, oh, this could be, you know, this could be fun. Um, so that's what I did. I started taking classes um, in 2003 and I've pretty much been here ever since. <laughs> like, I loved it so much. It kept me writing um, for so long that I just, I took anything and everything you know I just I wanted to learn it all <laughs> and they, they say it takes on average from the time you really start writing seriously um, it takes about 10 years to become you know reasonably published it's an average right I think it took me about seven years I think to really kind of go okay I'm gonna put my stuff out there and, and see what happens right and uh, yeah, it took me about seven years and of just, you know, practicing anything and everything and learning from experienced writers and just different ideas and, you know, going to see writers in residence, you know, getting people to look at my work and, and just being comfortable enough to let somebody else look at my work. <laughs> um, that, that sounds like that's been a real journey for you. Like that's, it, it <laughs> is. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm so happy to be here. Like I was... You know, I was working an administrative job um, in, you know, oh, 2000, mid-2000s. And, you know, I was still very involved here, but um, I was working this administrative job. Then I ended up getting married, and I, you know, got pregnant, and I was on maternity leave. And um, my maternity leave was just about up, and it's just the thought of going back to a 9-to-5 job. I thought, I don't want to do it, right? And, you know, my husband made, made decent money. Like, I knew I had to go back to work. We couldn't, you know, survive on just his income. But, you know, it was decent enough that if I went and, you know, found some place to work part-time, um, that it would, that would be fine, right? And so that's kind of what happened. I was in 2009, and my maternity leave was up, and it just so happened that the... It used to be just an office administrator position at the time here, so I applied for it. I've been here ever since, and the job has changed um, significantly since since I came back. But you know, so now it's more of a program director where, like, I'm doing you know all the programming and, and everything else. But, but it's great. I you know I wouldn't have it any other way because I'm even if I'm not writing, I'm working in an area that I love. You're, right. you're still in the creative field. You're just, you're, yeah. you, 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 you are, dare I say it, doing the business side of it. <laughs> sort of. Well, sort kind of. of. Well, kind of. You, you, yeah. you, what you're doing, you're more of a... You, I'm not saying you don't still write, obviously you still do. But, but like, your primary job here is you're more 
facilitator. You're like, okay, look, I'm going to help you get to what took me a long time. Yep. Quick. That's, 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 that, if I were to break down your job into one sentence, that sounds like... Sure, it sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit better than, yeah. than I could come up with. Um, but, you know, yeah, it's fantastic because, you know, I can't imagine um, not being here, really. Like, it's just has been a part of me pretty much since, since 2003, since I started taking classes and just learning from so many amazing instructors myself. And then thinking, you know, one day I would just, I'd love to be able to teach, although I never thought I would even be capable of teaching a class. Um, and I remember the first class I did teach, it was a one day workshop on writing book reviews because I had been writing tons of book reviews. Uh, mostly for Freefall Magazine, but like they were asking me, oh yeah, do another book review, do another book review. So, so I thought, okay, first time I teach, let's start with something small. And uh, it was terrifying. <laughs> it was absolutely terrifying. Um, but I got through it, and I actually got a lot of great advice from the participants in the class that I've kind of always held on to ever since, and I kind of you know, every class teaches me something different, you know, and now my goal was always to, I wanted to teach a um, short story. I love short stories. And um, I remember taking a short story class years back with um, Betty Jane Hagerick. And I just, you know, she was such an amazing instructor that I just thought, you know, this is what I want to do. Like, she made me love short stories more than I ever thought. You know, when I came into this organization, I was wanting to write um, mysteries or thrillers, anything supernatural, creepy, whatever. I was not opposed to horror by any means. <laughs> um, but you know, my own journey through this process um, made me realize that that's not what I want to write. I still like reading that stuff, but it's not not as good at it and that's totally okay mm -hmm. right um, so I write more literary contemporary fiction um, but it seems to be what works for me right and I can I'll read anything and everything but um, it, it, and the weirder the better like I'm really getting into um, new new structures, new formats, trying new things, playing with hy hyperbole or, you know, reading like George Saunders, who's just like a brilliant writer and, you know, trying to like do the weirdness. That so, <laughs> so, do. so then I'm going to give you my book when it's done. I go, it's called the, is it's been called the cloud diver. The log one is the matrix meets Indiana Jones. Oh yeah. Okay. So it has everything from evolving spam bots to zombie mobsters to the board, the, of the board variety, zombie monster, and uh, he literally only says the word brain. That's his entire vocabulary. <laughs> this is the fun stuff. The, the actual story is about a guy. It's about a, it, 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 it's about a guy that that works for this for this corporation, and he goes into he, he tests the virtual systems, and he stumbles onto he meets a uh, woman with in this in this world with a gunplay who goes into this old system, which we call today the cloud. A VR pro program, he comes across a file that everybody wants. No. Oh. So and that's and that's, that's and, yes, and he has a little he has a daemon with him, right? That that if you're a hockey fan, you'll recognize who I named the mapper. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and then it, it it's just basically it's a pulpy adventure, but but with all kinds of everything ranging from from zombie mobsters to unicorns with part rainbows to everything oh. in between. It's a, nice. Yeah. Fun. I'll give that to you. If you like the weird and wacky, because I try a lot, I try a lot of different try, things. I, yeah. You know, I like to kind of explore everything, and uh, I read a lot now, like for um, to learn. You know, there was a period of time where I was writing all the time and I couldn't read because, oh, reading something else, and either it would be like I would be picking the story mm -hmm. apart. Or I'd be going, oh, I suck as a writer. I'm never gonna write like this. Like I might as well give up now. <laughs> so it took me, it took me a while where I kind of, you know, was able to. Stephen King still makes me do that. 
because his prose is like incredibly clean. Like when when you read, especially his like later, like the later you read him. Although I I I, I think he's come to the point where I I feel like as a writer he said most of what he really wants to say, and now he's having fun, and you can tell he's having fun. And so technically, I think his some of his earlier stuff is stronger. But I, because he's saying something that mm-hmm. really he's really been passionate about. He still he still writes it's still good stuff, but just strictly on a technical level, incredibly mm. clean prose. It's like yeah. holy crap. I mean, I don't know if I'll ever get that <laughs> good, right? And um, but we can strive for absolutely. it, right? It doesn't mean that we have to get to that that point. But um, well, you get, we I, have to find our voice as a writer, and I think that was kind of my yeah. You know, my journey was discovering that just because I love to read this particular type of, of book doesn't mean that that's necessarily what I need to write. No. It, and I found my strengths in something else and haven't really looked back. I, you know, I still go, oh, maybe I'll write a horror story or something, you know. Oh, I'll try and do something, right? but it doesn't feel natural. <laughs> it feels very forced. Yeah. It's a different. It's a different thing. Like I'm trying a, a horror story out, but the characters com- is a complete like character I'm writing. Although there are things I can definitely relate to with him, mm-hmm. there are parts of him that are just completely not me, and I can I can I can totally feel that. Yeah. But I I'm kind of looking at it as a challenge. Can I actually? Yeah, can I do it? And yeah. It, try or, it. Doesn't yeah. mean anyone ever has to see it. Yeah. But you know, you try it and you discover you know whether you like that or if you're any good at it or if it's something you want to. Well, even if, even if it's just like even if it's just a one and even if it's just a one and done. All right, I, that's yeah. fine. Right. I, it's it, it'll make me a better when I go back to my strengths because it's it's mm-hmm. it's, it's it's an aspect of of, of that I. Explore. It's like I'm a little bit more elastic and may I add a depth that wasn't there before. And that's yeah, absolutely. Like yeah, I am not a poet by any means, um, but I've taken poetry courses simply to learn more about metaphor. You know, and it helps you to write a little bit more cleanly. You know, so there, there's a lot of stuff that you can learn from exploring other genres, even if you think like that that genre might. Terrify the hell out of you. <laughs> well, well, or, or it's going to stretch you, right? Like you, I think we need to be challenged. If we just, you know, stay in our own little bubbles, like how is that gonna improve the, us? Well, right? absolutely. Um, I was asked to do. Well, like I said, I don't know if it's going to get approved or not. But I was asked to submit another epic poem. I just did a three book epic poem series. Mm. Right, the third book's into the publisher now, and it's kind of like at this point we're we're at we're at the point where I'm going to start editing it real soon, and for a September release, I wasn't sure I was going to do another like long poem ever again. I'm asked to do this, and first, and then it's something that's been done by everybody, so it's like, what the heck am I going to say yeah. about this, yeah. right? And but again, that's that's the cha- that, that, that was a challenge for me. Can I make this fun? And now I'm like, well, I might actually have another epic poet series down. The road. I might not, not do it right away, but it's like. Yeah. No. Exactly. Yeah. Try things out. Don't be afraid to try new things, and don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I think, like you have to. You can't be afraid to fail. No. We go through so much rejection, like you just. As writers, we get used to that pretty fast. I think. Well, uh, <laughs> you know? going back, I, I, know, I think we'll get to the conclusion of this and we're wrapping up around this point. Like, it's not just a writing thing, but a life thing. You're, like, if there's anything really worthwhile to you, you have to struggle to get it. It's just the way it is. Yep. And you're going to be rejected by something, right? Whether, whether if in my case, it's that, it's, it's that girl to fall in love and get married with, I'm going to get rejected a lot of times. You don't get to Carnegie Hall without, you know, practice and getting, and getting your, again, you can't be free to get your butt kicked. And, um, but, or, or if it's, or if it's something else, right? Whether I go for the big house or the million dollar book deal or anything like that, there's, there's, there is, I, I'm going to have to take risks. And, and the fact is, I may fail. When it's all said and done, I may not have anything to show for it. Oh, exactly. But at least you try. Exactly. Well, I won't have any regrets. I think that's, yeah. that's the one thing. I, I, I have in my head, it's like, you know what? I did everything I could. I tried. I strived. I did everything I knew how to do. And if all I have to show for it at the end of the, end of the day 
is nothing, well, I can't take anything with me to the grave anyway. So <laughs> very true. <laughs> yeah. I remember hearing a, a quote once. I can't remember who said it, but um, you know, basically along the lines that anything worth doing is going to be difficult. Yeah. Right. So, and I kind of, you know, I always, when writing does get hard, I kind of remind myself of that. Yeah. All the time. So. It's a really good one. So, what's that for, what can people read from you, and how can people get a hold of you? You can always get a hold of me through the Alexandra Writer Center. <laughs> um, if you want phone numbers, or no, no, Twitter, and, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna ever. Here, ask. everybody, phone me. <laughs> the phone blows up. Oh, no, 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 so. <laughs> So I'll, I'll tell you something, I was in Arizona while I was working for writers in school, so, I, I, so we had to do this ad as just an experiment in Photoshop. So what I did is I didn't hang this anywhere, but as a joke, I put in my buddy's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah, no, it's bad like, as saying for a good time call. Yeah, it, it actually, it's better. <laughs> it's better. It's better. Because here's the thing, right? Because because it's a number, and, and it's, it's not for a good time to call, see, everybody knows what that's for, right? Everybody knows what that's for. But this, it's like, it, it, it's even better, because what you've done is you've hit the curiosity button. Is this number real? It yeah. looks real. <laughs> dee, 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 yeah. dee. And all of, a sudden, all of a sudden, you just, this phone blows up, and it's like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I didn't actually, like, the reason I didn't post I'm, it. I'm, a, I'm on Facebook. Um, you know, just under my name, Robin Benick. Um, and I'm on Twitter. Don't ask me what my Twitter handle is, so. I'm there. You're there. Just look her up, guys. Insta- find her. Instagram. I'm around, but mostly through the Alexander Writer Center. If people really want to find me. Anything out there that people can read? Ugh. Uh, well, on my website, there are some links to various. What's, what's your website? Uh, RobinZVanick.com. Okay. Yeah, I think. <laughs> you can see how much I attention I pay on social media. Um, yeah, there's links to some of my short stories that have been published, some of them online. One of these days I'll have my novel done. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And that will do it for another episode of Just Joshing. I want to thank Robin Van Eck for showing up on the show. I encourage any local author in Calgary to check out the Alexander Writing Center. There is definitely something there for each and every one of you. There is soon to be a creative writing course being taught by Sarah Johnson. I encourage you guys all to check that out. And uh, there's also many other programs you can also see. Beyond that, I gotta say this, we are now 10 episodes away from Just Joshing episode 100, which will take place live at Owl's Nest Books, May 24th, 2017, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Come on, come on, come on. I've already announced my first guest with Robert Bowes next week. I will announce my second one. It'll be good. And we'll go from there. All right, folks. That's it for me. If you want to support this this podcast, I would suggest doing it one of several ways. First off, you can subscribe to this podcast either through Podomatic or through iTunes. You could also buy my books, The Watcher and Storm Dancer, Currency of Courtesy, blah, of Mirror World Books, which you can find at mirrorworldbooks.com, or you can go through Amazon or any other place electronically where books are sold. Um, buy a book, send a review, that would be great. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is at Joshua Pentelaresco, my newsletter, which will finally be going back on track next week. Um, tinyletter.com slash jpentelaresco. All right, guys. That's it for me. Stay inspired. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. All right? Take care. Josh. Josh.